Today I'm going to be covering what I believe to be the best mods for you to use in Monster Hunter World. These are immersive mods that will help improve your vanilla experience, making the game more fun and overall enjoyable, all the while not giving you any over-the-top changes that could be considered overpowered or immersion-breaking. So no new crazy monsters or weapons or big voluptuous waifus. We are just making the game more enjoyable by adding some quality of fly features. So without any further ado, hello everyone my name is Dark Hero and let's get into it. The first mod that I have available for you guys is called Clarity. More details for skills than items. And as the name implies, this mod is all about essentially modifying the description of each skill, as well as a lot of items to make it so that the information that is conveyed is a lot more accurate and informative. So for example, the Safi Jiva seal, as you can see right here, it outright states the amount of affinity you gain from having it, granting you 20% affinity, 80 element and 60 status bonus with your weapon drawn. And with the number increasing to 40% affinity, 150 element and 120 status when you have the full set equipped. And this extensive description extends to a lot more skills throughout the game, and it frankly makes up for a much better experience for someone like myself that likes to theory craft and create a lot of very different builds. And when we take a look at the items, the same thing happens again, as you can see right here, the Might Seed, for example. Rather than having the game state that it simply increases your attack power temporarily, you can see that the game now states that it will increase your attack power by 10 and that it will last for 180 seconds. And the dash juice right here will raise your maximum stamina, reduce stamina usage by 25% and will last 4 minutes. This is a fantastic improvement over the base game and so it is a very big recommendation in my opinion. Now the next mod on the list is actually pretty similar to the previous one. It is titled Descriptive Food Skills and that is why we are currently at the canteen. So when you are here you're trying to order a plate and you're checking out the food skills, you may not immediately know what each of the different food skills do. Sure you can go over here and check each of them individually, but wouldn't it be nice if you could simply hover over to the food skills or even the daily skills tab that are on the right side of the screen and for example know what feel weakener or feline cliffhanger do and well that is exactly what descriptive food skills does as you can see from these screenshots it simply replaces the name of the food skill with its corresponding effect so for example slugger is instead replaced with a text that says that it will be easier to stun and feline insurance is going to be replaced with prevents and insta kill once this is especially useful for newer players but of course if you're someone that understands all of these different food skills then then it may not be as useful to you. Now the next mod on the list is one that you guys have been asking me about for a long time now. And as you can see each time I pick up a slinger ammo I get these bold icons that let me know where exactly it is and it's the exact same thing for a monster shiny drop. This makes it easier for you to notice where your drops are, especially on the harder to spot maps like the Horfrost Reach, where everything is covered in snow and so being able to see exactly where a monster drop is, well it's simply very useful. Now there are a couple of alternatives here, so I want to walk you through the different options and tell you which ones I recommend the most. The first is the Souvenirs Light Pillar. As the name implies, it creates a pillar of light on top of the shiny drops so that you can very easily see them. The color of these light pillars is going to change depending on the type of mod and the mod itself allows for very different options, whether or not you want to create bolder light pillars or even the color scheme if you want to change them. So if you are a Borderlands player for example, you may be very used to this, this may be the perfect mod for you. On the other hand, we have the dropped items EFX and this is the one that I use. It gives you a couple of different options if you want to basically make it so that every single drop is going to have this paw print icon on top of it. And the second option, which is the one that I use, is going to put a different icon on each of the different drops. So if it's Zenny, it's going to be a Zenny icon. If it's a Slinger Ammo, it's going to have the Slinger Ammo icon. And if it's a monster drop, it's going to have the icon of a monster body part. Again, this is the one that I use because I like it so much, but I do add something on top of it. And that 
that is an extra mod which is titled Bolt Icon Pack for Dropped Items EFX. And as the title implies, it simply makes those same icons a little bit bolder so you can see them even better. Frankly, you don't really need this extra mod, but it is something that I like to add, and so it is going to be a part of the list. The next mod on the list is something very simple, but it's actually something that can be very useful, despite being very subtle. And that is none other than the performance booster and plugin extender. Basically, by installing this, you're simply going to be making the game run a little bit better. You see, sometimes you may encounter, even on a high-end PC, instances where your game simply starts running at a very slow FPS, despite not having anything special going on on screen. It's very random, and it happens rarely, but with this plugin, you won't have that problem anymore. On top of that, this mod also enables many other mods that you may want to install, so it is very much a big recommendation on my part. The next mod on the list is the Monster Weakness Indicator, a mod that a lot of people have also asked me about. This makes it so that the monster's main weakness is always going to be shown on their icon, so that if you want to check a monster's weakness each time you go on a quest, you don't have to always open up your hunter's notes, look for that monster and check the physiology page. The weakness is always going to be listed right there, and that is just a nice quality of life update. Funny enough, it makes it so that the monster's weakness weakness is also going to be showing up, accompanying a monster's icon on their cutscene, which I think is just a little bit funny, but it may be weird for those of you that are playing the game for the first time. And of course, if you're someone that uses a lot of elemental weapons, if you are a dual blades or bow main, you may even have different sets for different elemental weapons, with each of the different elemental types. So this is just going to make things a lot quicker for you. It's just a nice quality of life change so that you don't have to open up your hunter's notes each time you're looking for a monster's weakness. So again, a pretty nice quality of life change. The next mod on the list is one that I think especially returning players are going to enjoy, and that is skippable cutscenes. Yes, one of the biggest complaints that the player base has had for this game since the very beginning and Capcom has never addressed, being able to skip the cutscenes is now a thing thanks to this mod. There really is nothing more that I can say about this mod, it simply lets you skip the cutscenes, and that is amazing, it should have always been an option. Now the following two mods have a very similar purpose, but I think they make for some very good quality of life improvements. The first one is Invisible Mantles, making it so that whenever you put on a mantle, you don't get this big ugly cloak that covers your hunter that you have worked so hard on trying to make look as good as possible. Let's be honest, layered armors are a big part of the endgame of Monster Hunter World, fashion hunting is a big part of a lot of people's enjoyment, and having such a key mechanic to the game, making it so that you can see half of your character model, or rather that it is obstructed by a big cloak, I don't know, it's not very enjoyable. So by installing this mod, you'll still be able to see your character, and the cloaks will still work as usual. I do believe there is a toggle in the options to make it so that this mod works for other players as well, so you can choose to see whether or not other players are also wearing mantles or not. So overall, a very good mod for especially the fashion hunters. And yet another mod for fashion hunters is the Invisible Slinger, which as the name implies, allows you to make your slinger as well as your clutch claw invisible for all armor sets. Personally, I think that the slinger makes a lot of armor sets not look as good. It kind of ruins some layered armor sets, and when you add the slinger ammo on top, some of those just look hideous. Take for example the big chunky Devil May Cry arms whenever you equip the slinger ammo. It's not a very good look, but with this you are able to remove it. And the best part about this mod is that it is modular, giving you the option to choose what part you want to keep hidden and invisible, and what part you would like to see. So if you still want to see the clutch claw but not the slinger, or if you just want to remove the slinger ammo but you want to see everything else, the mod gives you all of those options. At the end of the day, it's a very simple mod and a big win for fashion hunters out there. The next mod on the list, I know it's going to be a godsend to a lot of you out there. I have heard your complaints, I know that a lot of you dislike the way that scout flies work in Monster Hunter World. Trust me, it's the same thing for me. So the next mod on the list is titled Subtle Scout Flies. And what it basically does is reduce the brightness of the scout flies, making them not as flashy, not as immersion breaking, just overall less annoying. 
and you even have the option to make it so that the tracks and the footprints that the monsters leave behind are a lot easier to spot. Making it so that the scout flies become a lot less mandatory, the game relies a lot less on them, and you can easily find those tracks by yourself without having to deal with this big mass of bugs that take up a huge space on screen. This mod is simply fantastic and I highly recommend it to everyone. Now the next mod on the list is one that I love and I think that new players and especially those that are playing with other players going through the game are going to especially enjoy and as you can see right here, I am at the gathering hub and I have a lot more NPCs right here. Well the mod that I have here is called extra NPCs in a Stara gathering hub and as the name implies it puts a lot of extra NPCs that weren't previously here so if you are playing with other players and you come here often you may notice that a lot of facilities simply aren't available to you. Well with this mod they now become available and as you can see the place simply becomes a lot livelier. You can come right here so that you can access the investigations tab for example. You can also manage your botanical research center right here, manage your tail raider safari, have access to the armory as well as the smithy and you even have the muscular chef right here. It's a very simple mod that I think speaks for itself, so if you are playing through the game again and you are playing with some other players, this mod is going to be fantastic for you. With that being said, these are the 10 best quality of life mods that you can add to Monster Hunter World to make the game better. So if this has been useful, please subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you here again soon. My name is Dark Hero, thank you very much for watching and as always, happy hunting!